Sean Salisbury here for Open Sports. Let's talk about Bill Cowher and his Super Bowl team when they won in 2006 compared to Mike Tomlin's Super Bowl team now here in 2009. And Bill Cowher's football, there's a lot of similarities, folks, and there are some differences. And the big difference is when you, when you look at Pittsburgh is they don't have that grind it out, beat you up, in the game, run the football, four-minute drill we call it in the NFL. That when you got a lead performance, you need to hold the ball, get a few first downs, and pound it out. Jerome Bettis works for NBC now. It was his it was his time then to kill that clock and wear a defense out. Pittsburgh does not have that. Another thing Pittsburgh doesn't have right now that they had, Alan Fanica was a member of the Steelers back then, no longer on that football team. The offensive line is a little bit less physical, as witnessed by, you know, Willie Parker had a 75-yard touchdown run in that Super Bowl, and it, it jump-started the football team. So those things are different. They're not as physically dominating and committed to the run as much. Now, I know they want to commit to it, but it's a not a dominating run game that we're used to seeing with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Those were Bill Cowher's teams. Another difference, and it uh, just happens to be a physical difference because of an injury, is the wide receiver position. Hines, well, two reads. Antoine Randall L. no longer there in Washington. So the trick play situation, we saw that. Hines Ward and Ben and Antoine Randall L. But they can find somebody else with Randall L. and put him on the receiving end and still use the Hines Ward to throw it. So it's still there with the San Antonio Holmes. But it's the injury to Hines Ward. It's the injury that could keep people out four weeks, five weeks. But Heinz Ward, if he can walk and get out of bed, he's going to play. That's just the way he is. He's as tough and as hard-nosed and as unselfish a receiver as we have. And if it means knocking somebody in the teeth five times in the game and not catching one pass, he'll find a way to make an impact. But he was healthy. And, you know, when you're the MVP of a game in, in, in a Super Bowl and you do those things like that, Heinz Ward, the health issue, he's still as good a player. He still makes all the plays. But can he physically be out there healthy enough to make the same plays he made in that Super Bowl in 2006. So you look at those with Bill Cowher and, and his team. Quarterback's the same with Mike Tomlin and Bill Cowher. And I'll, here's why. Now, where he's not the same is he's got more experience. This is his second Super Bowl. He admitted Ben Roethlisberger did that his nerves never went away in the game. Normally after one play, nerves go away and you're, you're settled in. But in that Super Bowl, they never went away. And he ended up 9 out of 23 and threw two picks. But the deal here is he still found a way to win. Remember that third down and three play where he, where, he got, where he picked up a first down, kept the drive going for a couple more minutes, and that pretty much ended the football game. So I, I think back to that, and that sticks out in my head. Nine out of 23, two picks, but found a way to win the football game. And it's similar to Ben now. Now, obviously, they rely more on the past as Pittsburgh now with Ben Roethlisberger out there. And Willie Parker's been hurt. They had Noel Day Moore doing most of the damage. But they are a different run game. And, you know, two games ago, Willie Parker was able to go out there and, you know, get 100-plus yards rushing in the playoff game and get himself going and, uh, and bring that back to where Baltimore had to respect the run. But Pittsburgh still right now, the way it's turned out, is a running team. But they can run it better if Willie Parker's healthy with all that speed and he's a dangerous home run hitter. But Roethlisberger finds ways to win. Ben can throw two picks. He can overcome it and beat you. We, we saw, we've seen him three times against Baltimore this year in dire situations, come up with a play or plays to win the football game. That's Roethlisberger. To me, great teams and great players win when they're not playing great. That's how you just eke it out and don't care. I mean, it may not look good after the game statistically, and you may go back and say, oh, my gosh, how did I miss those throws? But here's the difference. He's wearing the ring. Matt Hasselbeck and the Seahawks aren't from that game. So you've got to take a long, close, hard look at Cowers and Thomas with that. Ben's a similar player. He can still make plays out of the pocket, underrated out of the pocket, tough, strong. Plays hurt, throws the ball, is confident, but he's more experienced now. So that's one of the differences uh, that favors Mike Tomlin right now. And Ben's still got the Super Bowl ring. And he hope, put it this way, if Ben were to go 8 out of 24 and win, Mike Tomlin won't care. Just like the 9 out of 23 game that he won with Cowher, that he didn't care either. They found a way to win. And then that's what it's about. Nobody remembers the stats except the quarterback who did it, but he's still got the ring to show for it and great experience. Now defensively, both teams are very similar. Some of the personnel has changed. When guys like James Harrison, and he can go out there and take care of his business. And, you know, Casey Hampton's still there. I mean, they've got plenty of players that are similar. But it's not just the players. And this is what Pittsburgh, that's why here's, oh, number 58, they have number 51, 52, 63. So that's not the key here. The key is that they're still running a 3-4 defense. And take the, the one thing about Pittsburgh they've been able to do, take the number and then take the name out, 
whether it's Greg Lloyd back in the day, years ago, whether it was Rod Woodson when he was on the football team, now Troy Polamalu still out there. Then you had Ike Taylor who had a big interception in the Super Bowl against the Seahawks. I mean, but you, it doesn't matter the names because the Pittsburgh Steelers are as good as anybody. And losing free agents and trading guys and not signing guys to contracts and putting somebody else in there to replace them, especially on the defensive side of the ball. So some of the names have changed, but, but, but the personnel, the way they get after it, zone blitz, pressure, get after you, intimidation, still the same. And I think right now the biggest difference is with James Harrison doing what he does. You've got his active, uh, uh, an outside linebacker, call him a stand-up rush defensive end, call him a player in space, you can call him a lot of things. But he's fierce, nasty, fast, and a difference maker. Pittsburgh always seems to have one. This guy seems to be as good as any that they've had doing that. But they always seem to replace him. Joey Porter leaves, bam, James Harrison jumps in there. So the Pittsburgh Steelers defensively are pretty much the same. And think about the Super Bowl now. Sean Alexander, I believe, rushed for 95 yards in the game, 90, 95 yards. Matt Hasselbeck had a decent game, had some boneheaded interception. But, the, you know, Alexander played pretty well. But what they didn't do is they didn't allow a lot of points. And that's more. You can go up and down. You can have 700 yards offense and do whatever you want. Don't let them score. And they, they held the Seattle Seahawks down. And when you keep a team to three points, 10 points, 13 points, you're, with that defense and, their, and, and Ben Roethlisberger, you're, you, you feel like you're going to score two touchdowns. And two touchdowns obviously would have been enough in that Super Bowl. And don't know if it will be enough in this one. But I don't think that. The, the, the Arizona Cardinals are overly comfortable being able to go 80 yards six times in this game against Pittsburgh. And I know Pittsburgh doesn't think that's going to happen. So their defense was able to keep people down and not allow them to score points in big games. That's exactly why. So there's the similarities in these two, both of them. Pittsburgh's defense this year was as good as, I mean, statistically was, was the best. I mean, you couldn't, you, you couldn't run it on them very consistently. You couldn't throw it on them. You couldn't score points. So they, yards to me don't matter. It's getting in the end zone. If you play on a 100-yard field and you only move it 60 yards a time, you're either kicking long field goals or your rear end is uh, or it's just kicking field goals and losing games 21-9. to 9. So the Steelers, that's the similarities. And there, there's a fiery attitude about both coaches. Bill Cowher, players loved him, but they also had a respectful fear for him. And he got after it, and obviously more experienced than Mike Tomlin. But you didn't lose much as far as the fiery and energetic part. Tomlin gets after it, high-fiving, body body banging with players, and he doesn't take any nonsense. And I was uh, funny how, and I thought, man, this describes Mike Tomlin. His line was sweet after that drop last week, and there's an article in the paper talking about him, and he overcame it with a couple big plays. But Mike Tomlin asked Mike Tomlin, he said, well, I just would hope that uh, he would catch that ball so he wouldn't have to have basically make-up plays. I'm summarizing, but that's what he said. He didn't all of a sudden just jump on Lima Sweet and say it's the greatest thing in the world. He basically let him know that you won't have to do makeup plays if you make the play in the first place. So Tomlin's tough on him, and their, their expectations of both coaches are pretty amazing. So that's what you get a look at in both these Super Bowls. They've, they always said that the tight end is effective, which always has been. The Steelers find a way to get it done. The biggest difference on offense is they don't run the ball as physical, and I don't, there's not a huge difference on defense. I guess one other big difference. The two others is Ben Roethlisberger, more experience, and Heinz Ward's injury could come up big. But I can tell you this, this game could turn out just as ugly and just as similar as the game against the Seattle Seahawks. It'll be the defense that's going to have to create problems, as Bill Cowher's defense did, and it's the offense that's going to have to make a player three when the game's on the line. I'm Sean Salisbury for Open Sports. Think you can complete the drive, play today, and get an automatic entry to win daily prizes, two tickets to the big game, and a brand new car. Start your drive today at opensports.com.